In today's video, we're going to install super singles on the back of my RV and bigger tires up in the front to hopefully help get a better ride. Let's just start out this video by saying that if you have a 2000-ish era Freightliner XC chassis for your RV, it doesn't ride very well. Better than a school bus, but the ride quality has been a complaint that I've had about this RV the entire time that I've had it. So there's a lot of different things that you can do about this. and I've been making steady improvements over the years. One area that I haven't done anything with yet has been tires. The biggest reason is because when we first bought the RV, one of the front tires had about a three inch crack in the sidewall, and before we even drove the thing home, we replaced all six tires. Uh, the one front had a crack in the sidewall, like I said, and all of them were of an old date code, 10, 10 plus years, and so they all needed to get done. When because of that, I didn't have much time to research available options, and I was kind of at the mercy of whatever options existed in this size in the area that we were when it was time to, do, to put those tires on. So we ended up putting some Falcon RI150 Eco Run tires on in all, same tires in all six positions. They're a steer tire, which is what most RVs run on the back, and we've been driving with them ever since. The tire that you choose just by itself, regardless of size, can have an impact on ride quality because they have different sidewall th stiffnesses and just different design characteristics. So now I've decided that I want to do something about it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put super singles on in the back and then I've got a larger tire size up front. These freight liners came from the factory with a 255-80-22.5 tire size in all positions. Those reportedly ride very badly, and it's very common to see them get the tire switched to the size that's on here now, which is a 275, 70, 22 and a half. One of the nice things about this tire size is that it's relatively common, and what's also nice is that by having the same tire in all positions, you can carry one spare tire, and then that could work for any position if you get a flat on the road. Fortunately, I've never needed it, but I do keep one of the older tires up in the front bay just in case I ever do get a flat. But I think that I can do a little bit better than what even this size does. So I did some research and I decided that I wanted to give super singles a try. So what is a super single? Well, this is one. If you've paid attention to semi trucks going down the road, every now and then you might see one that instead of having duals in the back, either on the drive axle or then the, the tandem axle next to it, that it has single tires but these tires are extra wide. Your typical semi is gonna run something like an 11R22 and a half. This is a very large tire. It is a, this particular one is a 445, 50, 22 and a half. So 445 millimeters wide. Michelin came out with these a bit over 10 years ago. It might be about 15 years ago now. And they haven't really taken off in the semi truck world, but they do have some benefits. One of the benefits that they're supposed to have, and this is the one that I'm really going after, is improved ride quality. They also are supposed to be more efficient and get you better fuel economy, which is the aspect that some truckers are going after. So what are the benefits of this tire and why am I going with it? When Michelin came out with these, they advertised several benefits. One of the benefits is that it, they're supposed to be more fuel efficient by having less rolling resistance. And this makes sense because even though this is a really wide tire, it actually, uh, it, it's actually narrower than the two tires that are normally on the back put together. So you have less, uh, less rubber meeting the road. So that's supposed to be the benefit. And then you also have, are supposed to have a softer ride. And what this kind of comes down to is the fact that having because you have one tire instead of two, you only have two sidewalls. And if you think about these sidewalls as being a spring or having a kind of um, shock absorbing or shock transmitting force, by having half the sidewalls, you essentially have half the spring rate. It's not exactly that, but let's just use half for the sake of argument. And so you've got essentially a big balloon area, bigger balloon area, when, a, when you have a force of the road hitting this, it will get transmitted only through the two sidewalls. You should have a little bit more flexibility and you should get a more comfortable ride, at least that's the theory. These haven't really found a, t a liking with the truckers and there's a few reasons for that. 
One reason is what I basically mentioned with all of these having the same size. If you only have one tire size on your semi truck or on your trailer, then that means that you only need to carry one spare and that that could work in any position. When you go to super singles, you're going to have different size tires at the very least on the back versus on the front. And super singles are not necessarily as readily available anywhere. The good part for me with all of this is that you can actually find super singles wheels and tires used pretty regularly. Uh, I actually was able to buy a set. I ended up buying six wheels and tires total. I'll explain part of the reason why in a bit. And I didn't end up spending very much money on them at all. Another benefit of the super, of super singles is that you're supposed to have lower overall unsprung weight when compared to a dual tire setup. This tire and the wheel that it's on is going to be heavier than one of the wheels that you take off, but it should be lighter weight than the two combined. Lower unsprung weight should always improve your ride quality. And with that, let's go over to the whiteboard and let me try to explain a little bit of this better. I've got a simple spring mass system here to try to show the relationships between the road and then bumps that you get in the road, the wheel tire combination, and the bus. You've got a mass for the bus, a mass for the wheel tire combination. This upper spring represents the suspension, and then this lower spring represents the springiness of the wheel and tire combination itself. The first thing that ends up happening whenever you get some sort of a bump in the road is that it's going to hit this first spring, which ends up being the tire itself. So if you have a softer construction of the tire, like a softer sidewall or lower air pressure in the tire, uh, a taller sidewall, which essentially increases uh, the springiness, the forgiveness uh, of that tire, then that's going to be able to absorb a lot of the impact before it ever even gets to the bus. By going with both a taller tire uh, in the front and then in the back a taller tire that also has a less stiff sidewall, that's going to improve the ride quality just because it's kind of like putting a softer spring in here before anything even touches the suspension. So now the second part of this is the wheel tire combination. So in the front, the, the wheel is actually wheel tire combination will actually be a little bit heavier because the new tires I'm putting on are going to be larger and they're going to weigh a bit more. But in the back, going to super singles, this this weight is actually going to decrease because a super single on a super single aluminum rim is going to weigh less than the duals, even if they're both aluminum rims, but especially if you've got one aluminum and one steel rim. By having a lower unsprung weight, this mass is able to move up and down with the bumps easier for whatever the same uh, stiffness is within the suspensions, and then you feel less of it in the bus. So in the back, things are being helped doubly, both by essentially softening up this spring rate of the tire and then also lowering the unsprung weight. In the front, the unsprung weight goes up, so that's a bit of a negative, but the theory that I have is that it's going to be offset by softening up the spring rate, both with a taller sidewall, a softer tire construction, and then also a lower air pressure in the tire. So here's a pair of super single wheels and tires. And if you look carefully, you're going to notice that these are different. Ignore the tires because these tires are actually not going to be what I put on. I've got a different set of tires that are going to go on. But if you look at the wheels, you'll notice that this one, you have more back spacing than this one. And that's not because I have these reversed. It's because this one is a zero offset wheel. And this one is what they call a two inch outset wheel. I'm planning on running these two inch outset wheels, but I may need to run this style, the zero offset. Let's go back to the whiteboard for a second and we'll talk about the benefits of this style and why I think I want to run it. All right, so here I've drawn the bus and this is going to be a view from the back. And don't look too carefully at the sizes of these wheels and tire combinations, but what we've got here is we've got the standard duals, we've got the zero offset super singles, and then we've got the two inch outset super singles. So remember, your super single tire is going to be narrower than the duals that they're replacing. 
what this ends up meaning is that if you go with a zero offset, you're not going to have tire going out quite as far. Michelin recommends using the two inch outset wheels whenever you're able to. What this ends up doing is it pushes the tires out closer to where the outer edge would be on your standard dual setup. And it also, and in the end, because the center of the tire is further out, it actually increases the track width, which should help with handling. Truckers tend to say that uh, these super singles don't handle quite as well as normal duals. So we're gonna see how that works out, but that's one of the things that we're here to find out. So if I can run the super singles, on the two inch outset I'm going to. So now we'll go back to the bus and I will show you a couple of the things that I'm looking at. So like I said the super singles are going to be a little bit larger the diameter than the tires that they're replacing. This is going to give me about a five in five percent overdrive which I think is going to be a benefit on this RV. But what it also means is that I have to be more careful about clearance. I've already checked around within the wheel well and I've done similar on the front and I'm not worried about any kind of clearance from the tire being a little bit larger. However, even with these 275s on, they do, in certain cases, get close enough to the fiberglass wheel arch that they can rub. I haven't had it happen on this side, but I have had it happen on the passenger side. So, especially with these being, with the super singles being bigger tires, I want to make sure that they're going to fit just fine. Doing some measuring, I think that I think that it will, but essentially I want to make sure that with the two inch outset tire on, that the tire edge will not will still have clearance and be behind this fender arch. Once you get behind this fender arch, there's really nothing back here for a tire to hit. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take this tire off, take these duals off actually. We're going to try test fitting this one. If it does work properly, then what we're going to do is load it up in the truck. We're going to take everything over to the tire shop and get them put on. But let me just show you quick on the front what we're looking at as well. The story here in the front is actually a lot better than in the back. As you can see, this tire is very well inset from the outer portion of the wheel. And even with having a slightly taller tire, uh, there will be no problems going lock to lock on this. And I've, I've tested that. Regardless, of, whenever you're doing something like this, do make sure that you're going to give yourself ample clearance, but even going through the full range of lock to lock, the tire doesn't come close to anything, so I'm not worried about it hitting. So let's go pull off these rears and see what we can find. It's a new day. I didn't have the right size socket, so I had to get go and get one of those. Uh, if your best is like mine, it's a 33 millimeter or inch and 5 sixteenths, either one will do. So I've got the front tires off and I've got the rears off from this side. I'm not going to do the other side yet since I first want to make sure that everything's going to fit before I go to that effort. The fronts I already know are going to fit. A couple of notes here. If you're going to do this conversion, you do want to make sure that, for one, your wheel studs are in good condition. You want to do that regardless of what you're doing. But also you want to make sure that you have threads going back far enough that you won't bottom out the nut before torquing the wheel down. Um, if you're going from, if you're doing super singles, you're going from a dual setup and you got dual wheels uh, to a single, so you're gonna have less thickness here. Uh, this had a, an aluminum wheel in the front and then a steel wheel behind it. That's really common on anything with duals, whether it's a truck, a bus, or uh, anything, or RV. And the reason for that is that the aluminum wheels are a lot more expensive and the steel wheels are cheaper, so you can save a little bit of money and still get the uh, pretty look of the aluminum wheels. If you do go to double aluminum wheels, and this is just a side note unrelated to this, uh, if you want to convert the rears to aluminum to save some more weight, you need to make sure that your studs are long enough to accommodate that extra wheel width. And let me show you what I'm talking about here. This is one of the super singles, but it's the same wheel width basically. So you take a look, that's, uh, I don't know how thick it is, but it's pretty thick. And then we'll come over here to the steel wheel, and you can see it's, it's actually probably even less than half the thickness. So you're going to have a whole lot more wheel on there for your studs if you do a dual aluminum wheel conversion. Just a side note, getting these wheels off was not really fun. I've got this giant three-quarter inch uh, torque wrench 
and I had it turned up to 650 foot-pounds, which is the maximum. Basically was having to jump on the end of it to get it started, but I was able to get all of them off. Uh, once I got them all started, I was able to use my normal electric impact gun. Uh, you can also buy a high-powered three-quarter inch drive uh, impact gun. I didn't feel it was necessary, so I just got the torque wrench. On my bus, the leveling jacks are strong enough to actually lift the entire bus off of the ground, so that's a convenient feature. Lifting the bus just enough so that they're barely off the ground is going to be the easiest way to do it. I got the rears a little bit too high, and so I had a couple of these wooden blocks that I was able to sandwich under either side and uh, gave, give it enough support that I was able to get the wheels off, but it would, would have been smarter to do it a little bit lower. So now I'm going to roll over this one super single. Uh, I'm going to start off with this uh, two inch outset backspacing because that's the one that I want to use. Uh, if that works, great. And if it doesn't, then actually that saves me some uh, tire work because the tires I want to use are already mounted on zero inch offset wheels and then I can just throw those on, but I'd, I'd rather go to the two inch outset. So let's see how this works. If you have a tire dolly, that would be smarter. So first sign is really good that it is fitting in through the wheel well, which I figured it would, uh, but being that it's a little bit bigger diameter, that was a bit uncertain. Well, I got the super single on and that wasn't too bad to get. Uh, I did end up lowering the jacks on the bus a little bit, so I didn't have to try to get this tire lifted as far. But, as you can see, it is fitting in here just fine. This is not the ride height, but I wasn't looking for clearance at the ride height. What I was looking for was clearance basically between the outer edge of the tire and this wheel arch here. Uh, I just have it on loosely with two lug nuts. Um, didn't need to put all ten on. But let me show you what I'm looking for here. There's a few things. Most uh, vehicles of this size are pretty well standardized. You've got a 10 lug uh, by 285 millimeter uh, bolt pattern, and then they're hub centric, which if you don't know what that means, it means that the inner portion of the wheel fits tightly against the hub here, up here, here, and then two more on the bottom. And so, what the lug nuts are doing, they are not locating the tire, uh, they are not actually carrying the weight, the lugs themselves are not carrying the weight, the hub is carrying the weight, and that's really a better design. Uh, if you look at older buses, some of them were lug centric, where you had, instead of a, a flat lug nut like this, you had a tapered one that would fit into the hole and that would carry the weight. The lug nuts torque down just fine. I knew that they would because the threads on these go all the way. So no issues here. Now, if you take a look from this angle, you can see that the tire is, uh, is to the inside of this fender well. And then just taking a look around here, the only thing that could possibly be hit is basically this angled section here, and that's gonna be well above where the tire is, um, and the diameter is not that much larger. Can't see back here, but there's nothing. Again, this was the part that I was really concerned about working. And let me go over to the other side and I'll show you what it looked like with the duals. So if you take a look from the same angle, you can see that the outer edge of the wheel, or of the tire, is actually right in line with the fiberglass. And, and that's why I was getting a little bit of rubbing. Uh, from time to time, you can actually see the evidence of that there. It was never enough to cause any kind of worry or concern, but undesirable and definitely not what I want the super singles to be doing. So now that I know that that's going to work, I'm going to load up all these tires in the truck and go over to the tire shop, uh, let them do the swapping, and then I'll put them back on. It's another day and I got the tires back from the tire shop. Uh, got three out of the four mounted. I still have to do the passenger side rear one. Uh, if you can, as you can see, I've got the hubcap back on. I had to adjust the spacing on the hubcap so that it uh, it still sticks out maybe a hair further than I'd like, but it's just fine. There's a little gap here, uh, which is allowable. Uh, I will say that this tire doesn't look very RV-ish, just because you can see it's got drive kind of lugs on the outside where most RV tires you do tend to have a steer tire even on the drive axle. We'll see how this ends up riding. Uh, the common 
wisdom that was given to me is that you don't usually put drive tires on an RV because it does impact the ride, but I think it's going to be just fine. So here you can see the front tire and you can't probably tell too well from this angle, but this does fill up the wheel well better. I think if nothing else, aesthetically, it looks nicer to have a tire that sticks out a little bit further. Um, it does, it still is going to be well on the inside of the wheel arch, so I'm not worried about rubbing or anything like that, but it definitely fills up a little bit better on the diameter. Another thing that I don't really have a good way of demonstrating, but I can tell you that from handling these tires when they were off of the wheel versus the Falcons that I took off, these definitely feel softer and more compliant. So it does seem like these tires, just by their general design and construction, should help to make a smoother ride. They felt like they have a softer sidewall and that also uh, just softer rubber in the treads. So I am hoping that these make a good difference for the ride. Something else that I've done on all of the tires is I've adjusted the tire pressures correctly. If you've been RVing for any amount of time, uh, you've probably learned about finding the tire pressure versus weight spec for your tires, getting your RV weighed, and then making sure that the tires are the proper inflation for that weight. And if you get that right, you can end up running them at a much lower PSI than what they probably are coming from the tire shop. Tire shop inflated all of these tires to 120 PSI, which is the max. That is a common practice when you're putting them on, on a semi-truck. But when you've got an RV, your weight's a lot more consistent and uh, your ride quality is definitely of a higher priority. So I've got these fronts air aired to 75 PSI. The super singles in the back are gonna be at 95. With torquing these down, what I started off doing was just getting the wheel on and then I went through and I used my impact gun to run all of the lugs down in a cross pattern. Uh, my impact gun is just a little electric thing. It does not get anywhere near the spec on these, which is 450 foot pounds. For that, I've got this big torque wrench and I'm gonna, I'll torque a couple of these and you'll get the idea. Unless you're way stronger than I am, you're probably not going to be able to torque this just by hand. And so what I've been doing is getting them started by hand and then stepping on it. There's your click. Go to the other side. Always make sure you've got a good cross star pattern. actually don't have the jacks all the way up and you might have noticed that the tire was actually rotating just a bit. So I may not be able to do this fully right now. Oh, there we go. Click. I'm going to go through. I'm going to do the other eight lugs. Another thing to note is that per Freightliner, after 75 or 100 miles, you're supposed to go through and retorque all of the lug nuts. So uh, I'm not going to put on the trim rings or the or the covers for the lug nuts. Um, no point in doing that. What I'm going to do is when I take it on a drive, I'm just going to take it on a good 7,500 mile test drive, get a good idea how these things ride, then I'll come back, retorque everything, then I'll put the uh, pretty stuff on. I know I put the hubcaps on in the back, but those are super easy to take off. You just push the center, rotate it off, so that's no big deal. But these are kind of more annoying. So I'm going to finish these up. Then I will do that fourth wheel in the back and then we'll be all ready for a test drive. May I notice that here at the end, I went around just an, an extra time to make sure that I didn't miss any going around in a circle. All right, let's get that last super single on then we'll be done. I've now got the wheels on and torqued, and I all, and I lifted the jacks so that the RV is now down. This is with the bags completely empty, so the suspension is at the the RV is at the lowest height that it would possibly ever be at. This is shorter than ride height. Ride height, I want to point out, and you can see that on this front wheel, you still have plenty of clearance. You can see that the wheel is taller than what the fender wheel would be. So the only thing to keep in mind is that if you were at full lock or pretty heavily turned and that you lost air pressure, you might come in contact with the fiberglass here. But um, I really like how this looks. It's a nice 
thicker sidewall fills up the wheel well makes it look more like a proper class a here in back you can kind of see the same thing uh, once again with it at the lowest position um, the tire would be touching the fender well and if the wheels were further out but these two inch outset wheels are the perfect size i think from the front you can see that they rest just a little bit inboard which is really how you want it the hubcaps are in a nice position on there uh, only thing to complain about is i haven't cleaned the tire up i'm back from my test drive with the super singles here on the back and then with the bigger front tires on my rv my impressions were very positive and ultimately this did pretty much exactly what i was expecting it to do the ride quality is significantly improved and I feel, feel like the ride quality in the back is improved more noticeably than in the front, which I think makes sense because this modification has a redu reduction in unsprung weight in the back, as well as having uh, essentially softer sidewalls by having two sidewalls instead of four. The front also seemed to be noticeably improved, and no matter what, going over construction zones, potholes, anything of the sort, it seemed like this did what I was expecting it to do. The weather for my test drive was good. There wasn't significant crosswind, uh, there wasn't rain, uh, so there weren't any of the sorts of conditions that might cause reduction in stability that uh, some truckers have reported with super singles. But I did spend some time driving on two lane roads and even with the truck going the opposite direction, which tends to produce a significant uh, gust of wind and associated movement of the bus, I didn't notice any reduction in stability there. So overall, I feel like these are probably going to be a, a net improvement for RVers. Some truckers have pointed out that if with a super single, if the tire blows, then you're just stuck there and you can't limp to uh, a next, another exit to try to get anything taken care of. If you're used to driving any car that has only four tires, you essentially have that same issue already today. So for me, I don't feel like that reason by itself is too big of a concern, especially when you figure that tire blowouts are a relatively rare thing. Another question I had was whether the drive tires on the back were going to be louder or noticeably rougher versus the steer tires. I do feel like they are a little bit louder, but not hugely noticeably so. Maybe people in the back would notice them more, but up front I, I didn't notice all that much of a difference. So ultimately I think that these drive tires work just fine and they should provide a little bit better traction in overall versus a steer type tire in certain conditions. Overall, my parting thoughts on this modification are that it doesn't probably make sense to do just for the sake of doing it, but when, you're, when it comes time for you to buy new tires for your RV, it makes sense to look into what you could do. Uh, for me, making this upgrade definitely would have been something I wish I'd done three years ago uh, when we first bought it. It would have made the ride a whole lot nicer over the whole time period that we had it. To me, the positives of better ride quality outweigh any of the negatives. And also the fact that these are a little bit taller, giving about a 5% overdrive, helps to get the revs a little bit lower, which is where I would like to see them on the highway. Given the fact that you can buy used super single wheels relatively cheaply, it is something that's worth considering when you're doing a tire change, because ultimately the cost difference for going to a super single uh, versus sticking with the other size is probably going to be relatively small in the grand scheme of things. Unfortunately, I'm not going to get to enjoy the benefits of this conversion for very long because we've actually signed a purchase agreement on a new RV, or new to us, it's still a used one, but you're going to have to wait to the next video to find out more about that. So I hope you found this interesting. Uh, make sure to put any questions down below in the comments, and thanks for watching.